Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about Chuck Rock 2, Ooh. Son of Chuck. That is, a, that is a unique sequel name if I've ever heard one. I like it, Son of Chuck. What is uh, What are some other things that are like Son of that you can recall from your days? <laughs> I'm not that's talking, a loaded question. Is, now you're messing that, with a son of a chuck. That's yeah. Let me rephrase that. What other films are there that are like son of? Like, is there like son of Godzilla? Yeah, and there's there's everyone has a son, right? Son of Zorro, uh, son of uh, son of Va- uh, Dracula. Yeah, you know, they've got offspring. Usually, daughter of Dracula gets all the the thing. Frankenstein has a son. Really? How did that happen? Listen, don't ask questions. There's a Miss Frankenstein. Mm. That's all you need to know. Okay. You know? I, I would assume uh, she'd be seen, Mrs. She, I forgot you haven't right? seen young Frankenstein. No. Because Frankenstein was endowed with an enormous... Rrr, 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 as Are the, you the, talking the, about Frankenstein the, the monster or Frankenstein the doctor? The monster. Oh. But in, they call in young Frankenstein, the monster is called Frankenstein? Well, they don't really call him the monster, basically. I'm not sure about this movie. It doesn't seem like it's true to its you know novel it's, roots. It's often regarded as one of the most faithful to the book. Really? <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> so, yeah. What do you, what do you, what can you come up with that were seek sons? Let's see that what makes this clever is Chuck Rock Two, son of Chuck, right? Because Chuck Rock Two is the kid's name, you right. see, but it's also the sequel. It's a double. That's what makes it clever. Mm. No, you're not buying it. No, I'm not buying it. We'll talk more about it later. Aaron, we got mailbag. Oh man, double trouble mailbag. All right, whoa. This comes to us from Merry Old England. I can tell because we've got the Queen's. Uh, profile there on the stamp. Mm. Okay. Mm. Well, that stick around after breaks that happens. Are they going to be big changes in the mail system? Yeah, that's that? a great question. I mm-hmm. am not fully equipped to talk about the ramifications of Brexit. No one is, apparently, <laughs> from what I've read. This comes to us from Chris Folds. <laughs> Putting on the Ritz. And. This is from Folds. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. We got two shirts. Look at that. And a, little, and a hand for, puppet. Checking for a note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me look at the uh, sizes right here. I know here. what you're doing, Boat. What a punk. Okay. And these are, well, um, these <laughs> one of these is either going to be way too small on me. Uh-huh. Or, uh, or okay, so let's just look at the shirts. Okay, let's yeah. Let's look at the shirts. This is... It's a me, it's Mario. A me, Mario. All right. Uh, this one. You love Mario. I do Boat. love Mario. He's he's my man. He's my jam and my bag. He's. Um. You know. And this is this this <laughs> this brings me back to Captain Lou. You know, I used to get up every morning at like five thirty. Yeah. To watch the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Show was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. But I no loved good. It. No good. It insulting. was Mario, and he was real. It was insulting to the whole. <laughs> The whole Nintendo Marvel uh, Mario universe and the Marvel universe too. That's how bad it was. <laughs> um, next, <laughs> I choked, I choked him up. Next up, we've got. Oh, check this out. This is an Atari. Oh, the 1972. It's got the Japanese down yeah, there too. Yeah, I love it when it has the. Uh, that's that's the when Japanese I lose. That's characters. when I lose a hundred pounds. I'll slip right yeah, in that bad yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, Chris. I Motivational. Think I'll, I'll slip this on right now since we're doing an, an ST show. And, uh, oh, <laughs> please send all your hate mail to address to Boat O Car. Look at this. There we go. Man, look at that. It fits you like it. Pull the sticker off there. I like keeping it on. It's sort what of the... a. It's a gangsta thing. You it wouldn't is? understand. Yeah, I'm OG. You are. You're goofy. I don't leave the, t- the tag is a little itchy. I was though. gonna ask. You... <laughs> that's not. That's not part of it. Do you leave that's the hanger the... in? Is that what you do? Kind of. Do you think that I might be able? To are use you this kidding me? Not the there. ram again. There we go. We gotta get you some knives for Christmas. My God, the ram served me fine so far. <laughs> Good life. All right. <coughs> so, and you'll have to excuse me, folks. 
I'm deathly ill. This... He's he's ham and egging in here, folks. It's all it's all it's all a charade. Aaron, mm-hmm. we didn't have any feedback last week, uh, so we're going to jump right into this week's. Amiga News. Amiga News. Yeah. So we're, we're going to get started with a little site update action, Boatster. Okay. So I just want to touch on this real quick. We missed a dream catch. I don't know if this one slipped right through us. So I think it was just having to come up right the day we were recording. PL Gold. I'm not, I just noticed this when I was uh, getting this ready for the show. Uh, and this is <laughs> in-depth as hell. And I haven't read it yet. So I'm Now, gonna... there used to be a show called Solid Gold. There was. Is that I don't think there's an affiliation okay. between the two. So I will come back next week after I've read that one. Another thing that the DK man did uh, was uh, Amiga Game Sales Charts Database Update. This uh, is exactly what it says. What he says it is. Uh, this just popped up. DK's on top of it. And again, I want to also mention that if... Uh, you uh, are into Dreamcatcher stuff, and you should be because his stuff's always great. Um, I would recommend checking out his video channel, uh, which is outstanding. He puts up a bunch, and he's got a, a crazy style that is all his own, and uh, it's always good stuff. So, I, again, DK stuff. Now, do we have any other updates on the site? I don't think we did. I what think, is this updated sales chart thing, real quick? I have not looked at okay, it. Okay, well, let's look it's at that just, real quick. Because I'm always interested in. Um, I know he. There we, go, up, go up, go okay. up. Let's see where it says uh, Amiga Game Sales Chart Database. Oh, okay. That's right. This is the thing you this were trying to This is the to Zoho thing. Okay. That's right. Well, we'll, I, we'll have to report back on that later because neither of us have yeah, a Zoho. I, I haven't, yeah, I haven't got a chance to see what it was. I've looked at. Uh, he did it one of these before that I looked at. So clearly that he's moved on to a bigger and better thing. Uh, and again, his channel. Top, have you ever watched any of his stuff, his recent stuff? I haven't seen much of it like, lately. So he, he, I know that he's 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 a great man behind the mic. He is, and he's a real a value. We really like his stuff. What do you got news wise, bud? You want to talk about videos now? News wise, we are going to go right to what we did last week on your show, ARG Presents, Aaron. Last week's show uh, was an interesting show. In fact, I really enjoyed it, I, and I wasn't sure. Uh, this was a uh, uh, recommended uh, show. Uh, I, th- I can't remember if it was, it was a Duncan Styles or it was Pi- or uh, Pixels. One of the two of them, I think, recommended this as a pie piece, which was games that were solely mouse games, Boat. And being an Amigo, I had to represent, and I picked an Amiga game, the ultimate mouse uh, computer console. Boy, the action's real hot and heavy here. Listen, are you... This looks great. See, you bad mouth in my pick? <laughs> I picked Shuttle Puck Cafe. I'd heard a lot about this game, and I had never really given it a shot. And I really enjoyed it. Now, there, it's not perfect. If It doesn't have any two-player support, which I think would have been a lot of fun. And I think there were some uh, options they could have opened up that would have made this game even better. But it's still a lot of fun. If, if you like playing uh, this sort of game, this sort of like uh, air hockey, mm-hmm. uh, it's very colorful, crazy characters. Uh, it, I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. And Brent, and Brent was down with it, too. Uh, Brent's pick was Mario and Wario for the uh, fam- Super Famicom, and um, I'd never even heard of this game, Bo. Did you, have you heard of this game? I've not heard. What, well, Shuffle Puck Cafe? No, Mario and oh, Wario. Oh, no. This, is, this has got to be the only Mario game that I've never heard of. This is a Mario game that's mouse-based. All right, it's so the Super Famicom. It didn't get released in the States, despite the fact that it's fully in English. So, I mean, it, it was ready. And it was even, so, it must be a horrible game. Then, it was right? even previewed. It's actually quite a bit. It's, it has a lot in, uh, in common with Lemmings, mm. in a way. Except, remember a, movie, a game we covered a while back called uh, Sleepwalker? Where you had to, you were that dog protecting that kid that was sleepwalking? Yeah, yeah. This game is sort of similar to that. In this game, Wario drops a, a barrel or an eggshell or something on Mario's head. And you're a fairy. <laughs> and you have to go around and protect Mario from getting killed. Okay. And if he's going in the wrong direction, you whack him in the hell with so your wand. So it's, it's a lot like Sleepwalker then. It's it is like it's like if Sleepwalker Lemmings had a, had a kid. Mm-hmm. It's got all the Nintendo stuff you would expect. Uh, you know the characters, the sound stuff, and it and the levels are pretty interesting. But it's it's not easy, but it's fun. I enjoyed it a lot more than Brent. Brent didn't have much time for it. Uh, I have to say. And one thing that made Brent mad is like the usual Mario tropes. Like for example, in Mario, when you pick up a star, what happens? You're indestructible. Not in this. 
In this, it's like a collectible. It's a lot like the red coins in Mario, mm. where you have to get four or five of them, and then you you completed the collection. Right. That's what they are in this. You know, there, there's a series of games on the Game Boy Advance, the Mario versus Donkey Kong games. I don't know if you played any of those. I heard, they, they, uh, this has been compared to it's that. It's a similar yeah. sort of thing, for sure. Yeah, but this, I think that, I'm surprised this didn't get a release in the state. I'm, I'm guessing, since it didn't do well in Japan, mm -hmm. and the mouse Which wasn't is funny, because you said here. it only sold, like... 800,000 or something like that. Can well, you imagine what Amiga developers would think if they only sold 800,000 copies the, of their games? Yeah, the, what I was comparing that to was the amount of people that bought Mario Paint. Because that was the mouse. So they were. it was mouse versus mouse. And this sold, I think it was less than half. Mm. And that was a sign. They were like, man, this ain't going to fly. So it didn't fly. So we had a good time this weekend. Coming up on this week's show, we're going to be looking at games from the 80s, uh, on MS DOS. Ooh. So if you're in the MS DOS, we looked at the 90s several months ago, <coughs> and this week we're, and I'll, uh, uh, I think this will be a fun episode too. Uh, Brent's, of course, Brent picked the goofiest, most ludicrous thing you could possibly have. And so I've, I've tried to be a little more uh, mainstream with my choice. What's well, time, Aaron? Guess who's just pulled up to the station? The Gamble Train. It's time for this week's Amiga News. What do you got for us, Boat? This week, uh, not too much news. Okay. Not too much news. But we are, you know, I did want to check in with our buddies, our friends, producing great Amiga-based content out there on the internet. First up is our buddy Ted Mark, the 10-minute Amiga Retrocast. Uh, he is doing a tutorial on the Amiga Vision. Are you familiar with the Amiga Vision? Only through reputation and magazine uh, <laughs> stuff, <laughs> stuff, basically. So if you are uh, curious about what the Amiga Vision can do for you in your life, um, it looks like it is... What's What was that other uh, program that somebody wanted us to look at on the show that was like Amiga Vision? It was like a PowerPoint type thing. It was something that we weren't good at. I tried to put together a demo with that, and unlike... Uh, the, Scala, uh, that's what it was. Yeah, unlike the ten minute Amiga pod, like I can't. He's got skills to pay the bills. This stuff, not my bag. That's why we're glad that the ten mark exists because he he has skills in all our deficiencies. Yeah, yeah I watch. I, I I like I like watching this stuff demonstrated. I don't necessarily need to go out and do it. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now this is a this is probably the biggest story of the week. Yeah, the Amiga Power album, the Kickstarter has launched. Yeah, okay. as of the recording of this, and I will say I've I've been in contact with the fellow behind this, Matthew, and a real real super duper nice guy. I've heard some of the tracks off of it. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. I told him I don't I don't think he's gonna have any trouble hitting the target. But uh, if you are into uh, Ami and this is basically remixed awesome Amiga tunes, if you're into that stuff with the with the added twist that the Amiga Power magazine is involved, a lot of the former staff and stuff. I think this is pretty much a no-brainer. It look it's done very, very yeah. well right out of the gate. Almost six thousand seven hundred dollars raised for a twenty thousand dollar goal. Yeah, so. I, I, I've heard uh, some of this. You know, I got some. Uh, I got to hear some of the uh, remixes. And I, I listen. You know me. I love the stuff, and I like remixes too. And I was, I'm on board. So I'll and be. I'll be backing this. What myself. was the name of the programmer for Manic Miner? Wasn't his name Matthew Smith too? <laughs> Yeah, same guy. I'm not no, saying it's, not. it's the same guy. <laughs> I've never seen them both together. It's a pretty common time. name. But yeah, I, I endorse it. And finally, our buddy Lo Farius of the Amiga Rama podcast is back with a new episode this week. This is episode 74 for him, Fantasy World Dizzy. Yeah. We have done uh, no Dizzy games in the history of this podcast. We have played them. We have played... Uh, was it a, a, what was the Treasure a Fantasy Island Dizzy. I, Treasure Island Dizzy and it was hard. Yes, we were not good at it, that game. Yes. I, I'll, Dizzy's on is going to be back in the mix. I'd say at some point in the future because he's too big a deal. Right. So if you can't wait for us to cover it, go over and check out uh, Amigurama. I will say this: um, if you haven't seen our uh, our, uh, our our ZX Spectrum show where we talk about Manic Miner, uh, after playing that game, I think I can play any hard game. Ever made. That's I'm, right. I'm emboldened. It's given you new courage it has. to take on the world. Yeah. And I guess we should mention, because we don't normally mention it, we do have a sister show called Our Sinclair. If you'd like another uh, podcast, we do it on a weekly basis covering uh, one ZX Spectrum game a week. Uh, check it out if you want. It's awesome. I'm into it now. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, it's quickly working its way up the ranks. All right, Aaron. It's time to go on. To this week's game. All right. Chuck Rock 2, Son of Chuck. Now, 
Let's talk about Chuck right now. <coughs> I believe, Boat, if I'm not mistaken, did we not? Does this one of the games? I know we played one of the two games on the Amiga Thon at some point. Did we play this one or the first one? Well, we played, I want to say we played the second one. Okay, which is this was the second one. So, Chuck Rock, Son of Chuck, uh, is a sequel to the uh, highly successful Chuck Rock. Uh, Chuck Rock 2 was released in 94 and was developed by Core. I mean, they've done it all. Let's just go over a few of their titles. We've covered several. They did Action Fighter. They did Banshee, which we've covered. I believe they did Blastar. I think we had a look at that one, too. Uh, Blob. They did uh, Dyn Dynamite Ducks. <laughs> I mean, my kid loves that game. Uh, Impossible uh, Jaguar XJ220, which I believe we've looked at. Uh, I think we do, do we do an Amiga's Plan or do we actually do that one as a look? As a look? We, I know we've played it. Uh, the Monty Python game. Uh, Rick Dangerous 1 and 2, Switchblade, and Thunderhawk, just to name a few. Now, did they, were they also the same core that did Tomb Raider? They did. They okay. did. That's the exact same bunch. I'd say uh, that game bigger than any of those games you just mentioned. Well, but have you ever played Tomb Raider on the Amiga? I think not. Well, so I don't, I don't, yet, I don't list the stuff. Hey, you, you might be a late You're release. right. You might be playing it here, so the way things are going. Um, so this game came out. Now, this is kind of strange. And I, I asked around about this, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think... Uh, I know what's going on. So this was released as a, uh, a disc-based uh, um, OCS-ECS version, and then there was a CD32 version. Now, what struck me as odd was uh, I didn't see an AGA version. And I think what they did was they took the, the ECS-OCS version and just basically ported it directly to the CD32. The music is different. Everything the music is, is different. The I played the... Um, CD32 version, and you told me you play the, the other. Yeah, version. the CD32 version also has the. Uh, I think it has the animated intro. It does. Yeah. It, so it, they took that from the Mega CD, uh, and then they took the the, the <clears> music <throat> for the uh, CD32 version is unique though. None of the other versions have that music. And it's it. it's unusual. And we'll we can talk about that here in a minute. Uh, uh, the uh, the apparently the guy who did it was a guy named Martin I Iverson. Uh, I could be wrong. That's what they've got listed here under the CD32 version. Um, so what is... Ch oh, I should mention, this got converted. As Boat mentioned, this was on the uh, the uh, uh, Sega Mega CD slash Sega CD. Uh, it was on the Game Gear, uh, the Master System. I'd like to see that. Have you played this yes. on the Master System? You have? Yes. Uh, oh, you're gonna, we'll get into that then. And uh, <coughs> it's a sequel to Chuck Rock. So what are you doing this? This is just straight up old school style platformer game. Mm -hmm. You play your your dad has been I like the backstory to this. Chuck Rock since the last uh, uh game has gotten into the automotive industry and basically he carves cars mm -hmm. and he angered his uh one of his uh uh adversaries who kidnapped him. And so it's time for Chuck Rock 2, son of Chuck to go save his daddy. Right. All right. So Chuck Rock Jr., or Chuck Rock 2, is a little baby. Is that his actual name? Chuck Rock 2? I, I, oh, did, did they call him anything in the docs that you saw? I didn't read the docs for okay. this one. This is no docs required. Just jump in. I didn't know if his name was like Sully. I'm going gonna, gonna to guess his name was Chuck Rock 2, since that's the name of the game, like we talked about. Okay. So, you are a baby armed with a club. That's all you need. Um, I would say he is bonk-like, mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, or maybe I think this came out. Let's see, this is '94. This would have came out after after this, BC yeah, Kid. Yeah, right? yeah. Bonk, Bonk was on its fourth iteration yeah. by the time this. So came. this it was pretty a pretty well trodden ground, boat. Well, not to mention the whole fact of Caveman Games was a well worn path as well. I can, I don't I don't like where this is going. So uh, this is a side scrolling game, and you and when you play the little Chuck, you're going through various stages. I mean, just it's a standard fare now. Uh, the difference is you're in caveman times. Um, Chuck can bash guys with his with his uh, with his stick, his club. Yeah, he can also kind of come down and whack them, mm -hmm. you know. And he can also has this gimmick, which admittedly I didn't use much. And maybe at some point in, later on in the game you use it more, but he can sort of climb up on. I saw one area where this became uh, necessary, but I never used it that much. It's, you? it's mainly like a cheap way to get out of the path of enemies. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, so, these games, each level has a, a kind of a unique level name, and each and it has sort of a different look. I didn't find the levels to be too long. You know, I thought that was I thought it was uh, the levels were uh, not too difficult. 
uh, he will come across, you know, all sorts of critters, mostly like, like, and some of these critters I don't understand exactly. Like there'll be guys in suits, uh, uh, dinosaurs will come up. You can whack them. Some things you have to you have to whack a couple times to kill them. Uh, some things will fly down. It's pretty much none of this stuff is anything that would blow your mind. You know, at, just by mentioning of it. Uh, there's destructible ground you can walk over. Lots of it's you know there's lots of uh, pits with spikes in them that'll kill you. That's which probably most of the time I died because of that. Um, and you navigate Chuck Jr. through these levels. Now, just right out of the gate, since you, I'm guessing you weren't super familiar with this game, your thought of the presentation, <laughs> the plot, the the character, the graphics in general. Um, poor. That's the word I'll use. Uh, the the caveman game has never been my favorite uh, archetype. Now you liked BC Kid, didn't you? Um, no. Oh, I thought you liked it. Not not particularly. Okay. I don't um, want uh, so uh, BC Kid is probably the most charming of all the cavemen. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, also in that milieu, we have uh, our friend Kid Vicious. <laughs> we um, both agree that we hate him. Right, Kid Chaos. Kid Chaos. Um, we have um. The, the caveman in Ugg, which I guess he was okay. Um, Not to the people that listen to the show, he wasn't. That's true. They killed that yeah, game. Most people, most people hate Ugg except for us. Um, in this game, when you want to do a baby, you can go one of two routes. You know, you can go like ultra realistic baby, mm -hmm. like real cute, you know. Or you can do like sort of exaggerated man child, kind of like baby Mario, you know. So you either, I, the way I see it is you got your baby Herman. You're familiar with Baby Herman? Yep. Okay. You got that? You got that trope? Or you can just do, like, the little kid, like the Muppet Baby sort of thing. Okay. This game does neither. This game manages to craft a kid in a diaper who has the face of the ugliest grown man you've ever seen in your life. Uh, there is nothing remotely likable about this character. Um, he is uh, truly horrible, and uh, it turned me off of the game almost immediately. Hmm. That said... Um, this game controls fine. Um, I was playing it with emulator, so I was able to jump with the button, as most uh, you know people that grew up with color TV and electricity do. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and uh, and the level design was not bad. I mean, it was firmly on the level of any um, sort of middle of the road platformer that you'd find on any console. Um, one aspect of this game, and really the the, the best aspect of it, is I loved the music. Now, it's unfortunate that you didn't get to hear the real music because you played the CD32 version, which had different music. I thought it was... I liked it. I actually liked it quite a bit. Uh, the, the Amiga version and the Genesis version um, and the Mega CD version have this... It sounds kind of like Raga, as Nigel Tufnell would say. Reggae. Uh, yeah. Maybe the CD32 version had that. Maybe it was the Mega CD. That's that what it sounded like. I mean, okay. it was sort of like jazzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay, so maybe I'm wrong. Well, that's good. I'm glad you got to experience that. Yeah. So I enjoyed that a lot. It, it, um, it, it was, it was, it's at first, I thought, man, this is really odd music, but it, for whatever reason, for me, it seemed to set the tone. <laughs> it made the game seem uh, more unusual, which is good. I, right. I, so I, now, I, I don't know if this was just coming after 45 minutes of playing nothing but Manic Minor, and that had something to do with the fact that I played you, this first. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, but uh, but I love this music, and the music actually does change. Um, I played oh, up yeah. until the first boss, the first the first big boss of this game. Oh, I got way I got way it. further than you. But I used a level. Uh, I used the the cheat that was in the uh, WHD oh, version yeah. to skip ahead and play a little bit of the later levels. And uh, <sighs> each every I'd say probably every five or six levels the music changes the music's all good it's yeah, all good i agree with that um so it's it's really it's it's kind of a mixed bag the character utterly repulsive the rest of the game it's okay real missed opportunity on the standing on the on the club um you know it would have been great if once he's on the club you could use the, pogo stick yeah, pogo yep, stick like I, that agree. Fails. I thought the same exact or, thing or even just to jump up to places where you couldn't normally reach something like that um there, it's kind of a um sort of a lame duck uh you know command that you've wasted there but i thought that the bosses were neat they use some different kind of it's not real scaling sprite scaling like you, you see like a bird he'll appear in the distance and then he'll go off and then he'll appear bigger and bigger um you know i thought that those those parts were really cool it wasn't um really until i started playing the other versions that i realized just how lacking the amiga version was um you know the 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 Genesis version is the exact same game 
except they spent a lot of time making the animation better. The baby bottles that you pick up, the the liquid flows around in them. Mm. The sound is the same, but it's different because the you know the Genesis has that wacky FM synthesizer chip, mm-hmm. which makes everything sound like. Wow, wow. And it, it, I mean, it was neat. Um, but the you know again, this is just another example of these late Amiga releases like Aladdin, where they you could tell that they spent the majority of their time working on the console release and not the not the Amiga release. I thought Aladdin was pretty good on the Amiga. Oh, it, it was, but it was just it, it looked so much better on the Genesis. Hmm. Um. Well, it's funny. I, I actually like this game a lot more than you. Okay. <laughs> I had played again. This is a game I had just I like. I'd put a lot more Chuck Rock one. And but I and I, I when this came out I was like what is this this isn't Chuck Rock this is well, this is a whole different game I went and I didn't give it any, a chance to be mm-hmm. honest with you so when I came back to it I was more I was ready to go <laughs> uh, actually I think the I think Chuck Junior is is a perfectly serviceable character I don't think he's that bad he's I mean how he's a baby caveman he's not supposed to be cute he's a freaking caveman well so was Kid Vicious. He was no, he wasn't a baby. Well, that guy he was, was a that caveman. Was a, he was a, no, he was a young caveman. This guy, it, it looks fine. I think. I mean, he not, he's supposed to be mean looking. BC Kid wasn't good looking either. He was he was, no, mean. he was weird looking. He would his head would explode. He ate too many peppers and stuff. I can't help but compare this to BC Kid because they got a lot in common. Uh, the uh, in a lot of there are graphically, I think this is an outstanding game. Lots of uh, cool background scaling and and and. and Scrolling, awesome water effects. Uh, the first couple of boss battles, I thought, were a lot of fun. I, I got for I got past the boss that killed you. He was actually I thought he was pretty simple, so it must not have been too hard. Uh, and I like the uh, uh, the sound. I thought the baby bottles that give you energy were spread apart pretty nicely. I liked the fact that the levels weren't that long. It made a you, you could get through a level. And I felt like I was accomplishing more. I, yeah, I think that you think that I don't like this game less than I do because I agree with everything that you're saying. Well, yeah, but I think the the kids. I think though I don't think the kids that bad. Oh, okay. I, I, like, you know, I thought the graphics were good. Look at him lumber along. He looks like freaking lion. He's a caveman. Mm, don't go. He's a caveman. It has light puzzle elements. It's got bonus rounds. Uh, it's got um, some clever level design. I mean, we've played a lot of Amiga scrolling games like this. That the level design was crap. Yeah. This yeah. I didn't think this was no. cheap. Now, did they have spikes coming out? The, the usual tropes are mm-hmm. there, but they're handled well. There are levels where you have to climb. Well, I'll tell you my favorite level, which I, I don't know if you saw it, was the level where you're in like the water area. Uh, that's I didn't get. I got to like I got to the third boss, but I, the, you, there's a level where you're there's lo- like a, it's almost like a water park where you got to go in these logs that are filled with water. And it's water effects everywhere. And there's waterfalls and stuff, and there's dinosaurs spitting water at you. And then a couple parts to get across to get across jagged rocks, you have to run on like a wave of water. I like that. I think that was I thought that was really cool. Now. Junior doesn't have the personality of BC Kid. I think BC Kid was aided a lot by like the uh, ability to eat the food yeah. and, and or bite well, your he, way he up just, stuff. He emoted a lot more. You know, than plus this he, guy. he's got a club. This guy's got a club, and BC Kid is basically like head butt. It was stuff. just all teeth. But um, this game really actually sort of surprised me. I, again, the music is an it's an odd choice, but it separates the game musically from a lot, most other games I've played. Um, I thought it was colorful. I thought the enemies were fun. There's elements where you ride creatures, mm-hmm. uh, which is interesting. Now the funny thing is, uh, the first time I rode something, uh, which was uh, now I don't like there are places where you ride ants and stuff across like rocks and stuff. But I'm talking that you could actually control the right. creature. Uh, I lost him pretty early, and then for the rest of the level, you're pretty much boned. So you better have a lot of health to get mm-hmm. past this thing because you're going to get. You're meant to be on that guy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And so if if you lose him, there were elements of this that I would. You mentioned Lionheart in a jerky way, but there were elements of this that reminded me of some of the level design of Lionheart. And I will uh, say this game is much like if Lionheart would have had this art style, then I would have liked it so much more because it's not that sort of creepy organic browns and purples this is a lot more greens and and pinks and it just I, you know i i could handle a lionheart set in this universe well sure. i no i think lionheart's uh, is better and more interesting to look at but uh uh i think this has its merits too it's just i thought it was a fun and it's i like a good comedic sort of a comedic game like this it's fun it's lighthearted. you know i mean your dad for god's sake your dad 
cars cars yeah, out that, of rocks. Yeah, that part is amusing. I think that's funny. It had a full kind of an intro, which I thought was cool. It let you know the story, mm-hmm. you know. That's why another reason I didn't read the manual. I just I just I saw the story. I used up for jump. Uh, to, to traditional style, mm-hmm. and it worked fine. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't have any trouble at all. I thought the, con- <coughs> I thought the controls were solid. To mm-hmm. be completely honest with you, I didn't have any trouble. There's a, there's a, there's a water level. That sometimes you're like sharks come out and try to bite you, you know, stuff like that. Um, I dug it, I, and I got really nothing bad to say. I was surprised because another game that I thought I would I would murder, uh, but uh, um, I'm not going to do it. You I- know, in the world of Amiga <coughs> platformers, it is slim pickings. I, and I, I don't would, agree with that either. I think there's plenty of good ones out there. Well, I disagree. This is one of the better ones, for sure. This is one that I would sit down and play again. This is one I would put right up there with any with any console release. It Well, I mean, clearly, since it was released on consoles. And, and now you said, did you say you tried some of the other consoles? Yeah, so Let's I tried them. You know, Graham highly recommended the Master System uh, version, which is, it's, it's a different game. The levels are different. Right. Um, the action is a little bit more. Uh, it's it's kind of a faster game. Uh, there's less time where you're just kind of walking across an expanse without anything happening. Um, but it's mostly the same. Um, it holds up well. I'm not as wild about it as Graham was, but mm-hmm. uh, it's it's another option out there. Um, the Genesis version, like I said, if you if you can only play one version. The Genesis version, I think, is is the is the version to get. Now, do you, is it the CD version? No, not the Mega CD version. Is it? In, did you try that one? Uh, I didn't try that one because it wasn't on my uh, Forgotten Worlds build. Uh huh. Um, but uh, but I'd like to try it. Um, mm-hmm. because uh, it, it that does give you the full motion cartoon at the beginning mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I uh, you know, I, I think about this game. It this is a sort of a different game than the original Chuck Rock, and um, there are elements of Chuck Rock. Uh, Chuck Rock has a great the, the bit with the band at the beginning. I love. I like the musical tune they play in there. I look at. I thought that was funny. Uh, so it gets the edge there. But I honestly, I think I prefer this one. I think Core really went in and uh, and learned a lot and tweaked it and, and and did a good job. I mean, I I've, I was surprised how much I liked it. This is my favorite uh, game of this sort on the Amiga. No, but it's it's an excellent game. And we always talk about would this be worthy. You know, games that the Amiga community think are great, if they're worthy to play on, like, a console, would they have done well? You know, I think... Th- I can see why this one got released. Mm-hmm. I mean, it stands up pretty nicely. It gets a lot of console port... Uh, console games of the time. Uh, so, there you go. Now, uh, again, we, we discussed that this was released on two platforms on the Amiga. So, I went ahead, just for kicks, and scored... And got reviews for both. I'll just run through them quickly. So, on the CD32 version, which I played... Um, Lemon gave this a 7.84, uh, and, uh, Amiga Computing gave it 71, Amiga Format 79, Amiga Power 64, hmm. uh, CU Amiga 84. You know, I wonder, this, since this is 94, I wonder how much platformer fatigue was during this. Yeah, and these, those are all from 94. Mm-hmm. Now, the ECS version on Lemon scores a 7.77, mm-hmm. and, um, I looked up scores for it as well. <laughs> now, it actually did better... Score from magazine reviews. Um, Amiga actually gave it a 90. Amiga Computing gave it an 89. Amiga Format gave it an 81. Mm-hmm. Amiga Magazine gave it 7.5 out of 10. Uh, and Amiga Power reviewed it in 93, uh, April 93 and gave it an 83. I'm guessing since it released slightly... Sorry, this is that water level I was telling you about. If it, I guess since it released a little earlier than the CD32 version, that maybe they were being feeling a little more lenient or more yeah. impressed. yeah. Uh, again, I, and I, when they saw the uh, the CD32 version and how little had been done, that probably is why it scored the way it did. Yeah, you know, I've got a Game Gear. I may have to pick this up and see how it plays on there too. That'd be kind of an interesting this thing to see. Uh, but you know, overall, I dug it, man. Uh, oh, eBay. I did look this up on eBay. So again, there were none in the U.S. Um, I, I found boxed versions in, in the U.K. eight dollars, sixteen dollars. Those would be the uh, OCS ECS version. I found the discs only for twelve bucks, and then for the CD32 version, thirty-two bucks, thirty bucks. Uh, those are both out of Germany, so you're gonna pay a little bit more for the CD32. I'd that's, probably that's par for the course, really. Th- honestly, I'd probably go for the box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> go for the box. Yeah, because you get a cool box right. for starters, and you're probably not gonna unless you just have a CD32. The, the you'll probably 
get more enjoyment because there's going to be more stuff in it, you know. Right. And you've got the box. So that's the way I look at it. But overall, hey, I got nothing to complain about, man. I dug it. I thought it was a good game. All right, Aaron, we got some uh, Discord reviews. Awesome, Boat. Let's hear them. Uh, Graham Vebke says, the sequel plays better than the original, still mm. up for jump, and has better level design. Not really a fan of the baby protagonist, though. The graphics look worse than the original. Perhaps they were reused from the console version, which landed first. But it's a decent platformer. 6.5 out of 10. Chris Fold says, looks nice, irritating music, pointless collectibles, forgettable attempt at a mascot character, average controls with an up for jump. That's right, it's another Amiga platformer, and not one I will come back to. 6 out of 10. Folds gets it. Come on, Folds. Leaf Killand. A very well done platformer for the Amiga. Mm -hmm. Good graphics mm -hmm. and great design. A yes. wonderful soundtrack, tight controls, and memorable levels and bosses. I was playing this throughout my childhood, but never finished it. I really like it. 8 out of 10. See, I, I agree with him. Yeah, I agree. Pixels at Dawn says, Decent platformer with great graphics and music, plus some top enemy boss and world design. Yep. Sadly, the core gameplay loop is just too slow and repetitive when not riding animals to hold attention for too long. 6.5 out of 10. And finally, Matthew Perron says, This is a charming platformer with great graphics, simple mechanics, and funky tune, though not very suiting the Stone Age theme. I don't know. We don't know what kind of music they had back in Stone Age times. Yeah, they do. Have you ever seen Caveman? Oh, yeah. I guess we do know. Mm -hmm. Like many platformers on the Amiga, playing it on an emulator gives you a button for jump instead of the classic up, which gives it more decent controls. I will come back to it sometime for sure. 7 out of 10. So thanks, guys. Thanks for those Discord reviews. And as always, anybody that's a part of our Discord community can leave us a user review for this week's game, and we'll read it live on the air. Last week, we got some new uh, Patreon supporters. Oh, sweet. And I always like to uh, identify the new supporters when they sign on for the first time. Um, and it was funny because they all kind of came one after the other right there on the show. They were they were watching the show live, and they were like, I'm doing it. Awesome. And so um, I'd just like to give a shout-out to Craig McClellan. Lobsterminator. Yep. Our Lone Finn. I saw him on Discord just just, just today. Just today. Yep. And Andy Jones. Andy, Andy Jones. Jones. Yeah. Um, so, welcome, guys. Thank you for becoming Patreon supporters. Um, last week's Patreon song challenge, Aaron. Um, it was really... I was worried at the beginning because this is one of those songs that I thought, well, is this, is this even though these guys are British... Is it going to be a song that only Americans knew? Because there's a lot of bands that were from England but not big over there. You know, mm -hmm. they came over here and struck it rich, widening the uh, the British invasion way. But it didn't turn out to be that way at all, because uh, we got some we got some folks. So anyway, the song "I'm Henry the Eighth, I Am." I knew it <laughs> by Herman's Hermits. Herman's Hermits, right? Yeah. Uh, Terry Howard first to chime in. Figgy CTZ, Herman's Hermit's huge in Sweden. Uh, Andrea Hucker down there in uh, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And good old Pac Billy. Now, so you're saying Herman's Hermit's weren't big in the UK? That was what I was thinking, because at first there was nobody writing in. I, I thought was, they were pretty big. Yeah, I, I didn't know. The, didn't the know. lead singer for Herman's Hermit's did the uh, very memorable tune from Naked Gun. Something tells me I'm into something good. Remember that song? Yeah. And they're, so yeah. they're going across the beach. And they close on that guy. And they come out laughing. They just saw Platoon. That's all I playing. love Herman's yeah. Hermans. That was one of the LPs my parents had. And I used to spend that thing all day long. I believe that. I can see that's your speed right yeah, there, Bo. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Pac Billy writes in with this little bit of trivia, too. He says, this was actually written by Fred Hall and R.P. Weston in 1910. Oh, man. And made famous by music hall star Harry Champion. What, so, a, what a name. I did, how can you not? How can you <laughs> fail with that right. name? <coughs> so he says, everyone who guesses Herman's Hermits is technically citing a cover version. Oh, man. Who was this that wrote you in? This is uh, Pac Billy. He took you to school. He did. He did. Uh, Peter Noon, the lead yeah, singer. I, I should have known that. I should have known that. Um, so this week I had planned on regaling you with an awesome, uh, one of my most epic Patreon songs ever, but as you can probably tell by my constant hacking, um, I am a little under the weather. You hear that week. siren? You hear that? That's the cop out. Oh, I like that one. I'm going to use that one with the kids. Um, so, uh, instead I'm going to do this. This is, this is, it's going to be a challenge. This is going to come from a movie. So you got to think about a movie okay. where beat poetry was being read. I don't think I saw that one. Okay. You know? 
Off to a good start. So here we go. Andy Jones, Lobsterminator. Craig McClellan, 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast, Counting Virtual Sheep. Bernard Quinn, Retro Man Cave. Tim Drew Dale Williams, Simon Rose Joseph Harrison, Kyle at Rob O'Hara. Unfortunately, that's the end of like the little bit from the movie. So now what are you going to just start over? So now we'll do a little bit of... Um, um, well, I'll, I guess I'll just read them. You didn't really think this one through, did you, Boat? No, I didn't. <laughs> you poor didn't. sick bum. I was supposed to be on my way to San Diego. Oh, man. Oh, poor Boat. Howard Nibs, the man. Um, you want to go back to the funky facts? You can always do that. That was a huge hit. You oh, love God. giving the funky facts. I don't know facts. if I got it in me. Okay. Matthew Larimore. Andy I know Craig. he's no good. I can tell you that right now. I know him personally. <laughs> Andy Craig. Seanzo. I love that. Yep. Darren Lomax. Remember the uh, Dr. Seuss, the Lomax? Yeah, uh, Dr. Seuss scared me as a kid. I'm yeah. not into Dr. Seuss. I never felt comfortable with him. No, it's freaky, man. Colin419. Uh, that's when you don't inhale. You're almost there. Is that what it is? I thought that's when he was born. Uh, Barkbit. We, we discussed that one. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. that he was, he was like, I can't understand why people don't know that it's just like a bit of bark. Mm -hmm. But what he doesn't understand is that bark, or maybe he doesn't understand this, is that bark is like onomatopoeia for like a dog sound in English, because I'm quite sure it's not. Well, I think, I, I think like, you so know. So like a little bit of a dog bark, or like bit in the past is, tense, See, that's like not the way I think the, about what it. Do you, how do you like, think Like, you know, about like BC it? kid will grab stuff with his teeth and go like, all right, that's what mm -hmm. I think is the way him biting a tree. Yeah. That's yeah, what I think of. Right, you know? right. So that's, in my mind, this guy looks like deep, like BC kid. Yeah. Bald, big head, right, biting stuff. It's, uh, yeah. In, superimpose your own picture mm, yeah. upon what you think Barkbit looks like. You should send in drawings of who of what you think these people look like. <laughs> That'd be great. We'll piss everybody off of that. <laughs> Roland Burke, our boy Roly, the smartest man. You know, Ro I, I used to see a wrestling guy, and this guy was named Roland Hard, the food stamp champ. Mm. And he'd come out to the Fat Albert theme, and he's a big, fat, white guy with a big afro. Bow, come bow, out. Bow, he passed you on. You think Bill Cosby gave permission for that? I doubt it. No, I don't think so. Um... Andrew Monks. The monk. Mm hmm Joe the zombie. Uh, He's still restoring that house from like 1910 man. out there in the wilderness. Yeah. Good luck, pal. John Cook. The podcaster. Cook. The retro bookmobile. <laughs> that's, that's a, I love the name of that. <laughs> uh, Dan Ross. We know him. Yes, we do know him. Uh, Leif Kellon. who so a Viking name. Practices under an alias on YouTube. I won't reveal his name. You're not gonna you're not gonna out him here. Alan Kebab, you my favorite my favorite British food. Yeah, <laughs> Alan on the stick. That's right. <laughs> uh, you got your checkote. Uh, is that the way you pronounce it? Checkote. That? What's that mean? It means like um. What language is that? It's probably uh. I would say it's probably well cote is like a wrist. Wrist reversal. It's like an Aikido term, I think. So he's some sort of maneuver. Yeah. What a maneuver. Yeah, right. Who said that? As Gorilla would say, or yeah, Vince. Yeah, Gorilla, right. Um, level Lord, the Lord of the Level. Which is not what I was in, in any of these games <laughs> this week. John Marshall. We know him. Local boy made good. Yeah. Matthew Perron from up there. You gotta do the you're gonna do your noise. Oh man. You're gonna be a lot of hosers down here whooping your hind. They love it. They no, love they it. I hate that noise. Ricky DeRocher from up there in the mass. Is, that, sounds, that sounds like a, that name fits right mm -hmm. up there, yeah. That might Richard, not even be where he's from. But Richard I, just, DeRocher. I think Massachusetts is I DeRocher agree. when you got a DeRocher. Like Leo DeRocher? Yeah. I think he managed the Brooklyn Dodgers. How old are you? <laughs> My God. They've been out of Brooklyn for decades. What? Like 100 That's years. why they call them the New York football giants. you got to differentiate between the two. Um, let's see. we got Creepy Dead Boy. No said star uh, star software developer out there in the Bay Area. It's creepy, yeah, making millions. Figgy CTZ Animator Supreme. Figgy, some call him the Reanimator. That's what. The, what's that mean? <laughs> Does that mean he copies other people's animations, or he only writes dead stuff? I don't write the nickname. Have you seen Reanimator? No, I didn't I, no, think so. No, even I didn't just think looking so. at that at Video Vault scared the crap out of me. 
you should watch it. It's a good family film. Yeah, I bet. Uh, the slow Norris. Slow. Out there in the. Um, I always think of Eric Clapton when I hear his name. Yeah, the slow you want a man with the slow Norris. Yeah. The, <laughs> is that true? I don't, <laughs> I don't know true. what. I don't know if I like that. My roommate in college was named Tim Norris. I see. So I always was he slow? Him. He was not fast. Mm, there you go. Uh, Stefan Sorgard Mortensen. This guy, you know what I think about Stefan Sorgard Mortensen? What uh-huh. do you salt? Mort- Morton Salt. That's I think right. I think he's got a cool name. So I, I think, think that he's constantly carrying that umbrella. You know, and just with the I made up it. an alias to be cool, right on the line. The Devil Bunny. Here yeah. he comes, right? Yeah. Because nothing sounds cooler than that, right? These there are people in the world that just were born with handle type names. That's true. That's like true. in America, no one has a cool name. They were born for the internet. No. Edvin Helland. It's another good one. Yeah, he's small but mighty. He'll knock you out. Yeah, you got a V in there. Yeah, yeah. We, what do we got? We got. We don't have any Vs, that's for sure. No. Blendo seventy five. A cryptic name up there in uh, the northern panhandle of West Virginia. Yeah, cryptic on that yeah. Blendo. Mm-hmm. Christopher Hassel. He'll hassle you. He will, unless he's sending us awesome stuff. Yeah, from Australia like the the SNES Classic. Um, Ravi Abbott. I know him. I think I just saw him DJing the other day. He's always spinning yeah. up there. He's doing I the wish things. I could do that. Sometimes I just do that. I've got that DJ like hero. Mm-hmm. Now, no one bought that but me. I kind of liked it, you know? I feel like you could go out to the arcade and you could put yourself a little stream together. You know, I just ordered a uh, mirror ball off the arcade. Ooh. And I just hooked up all the uh, rock band stuff out there, too. So there will be some live rock band action. We're going to have a time I'm going to take there. requests, man. Yeah. That'll yeah. be awesome. I will sing all the classics. ABBA, <laughs> you know, Susie and the Banshees. The whole, the, all, <laughs> everything anybody wants to know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Folds. The, the uh, omnipresent man of a million things he's everywhere <coughs> this is he is the uh the giver of fine fine t-shirts that's true um let's see here uh dream catcher the dream catcher talented amazing uh non-stop workaholic he's a renaissance man he is uh laurent Giroux, mm-hmm. the conscience of the amigos mm. graham Vebke. The, the booze provider. That's right. Official, <laughs> official stalker. <laughs> and our good buddy from yeah, way down there. That's right. The whole family. Lane. The What rhymes with Lane? There's not much that rhymes uh, with Shirley Lane. Shirley McLean. The Shirley McLean. Vincent. We were just talking about her, right? She's nuts. From Beetlejuice? Shirley McLean was in that? Wasn't she the mom? No. What? No. God, no. That was Catherine O'Hara. Mm. Okay. Oh, wait. The mom. No, the... Catherine O'Hara was the chick that moved in. Right. The mom was, um, um, you know, well, what's her broad? You know, the chick from the pirate movie, the chick from Thelma and the Wheeze. What's her name? Somebody I always helped. thought it was Shirley MacLaine. No, Shirley MacLaine's old, dude. Was she the Partridge family? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I know that. Wow, you're way out there. Okay. Um, Adam Battersby. Good man. The bad... <laughs> What do you got for that? He's always slacking around a B. <laughs> I always get him and Adam Bradley mixed up, so I'm always afraid to say something because it will it will be the other guy. They may be the same man. They might be. Um, O'Brien's retro and vintage. Gina Davis. Thank you. Thank you, Henrik. Mm. That's who I was talking about. Um, she's the mom, or she's, she's, uh, she's Alan. She's there's well, I mean, no, she is not the mom. She's Catherine the, O'Hare is the mom. She is the ghost. With with the Baldwin guy, right? Yeah, that yeah. yeah. Okay. Charlie McLean not involved. Um, Gary Hucker, the Huck, the hardware expert in the Amigos. Mm-hmm. C. Brian Jones, where? Well, he's he's dead. He died in a pool. Really? I thought yeah. he was at sea. No, but uh, but his spirit lives on mm. as our uh, supporter. Um. Paul Harrington, boss man. Mm-hmm. I mean, he runs... Boss man. I keep thinking of nails when he you says You know, there's that. only so many tech companies over there in Sweden. Uh-huh. And they just erected a picture of his face on the skyscraper where he works. Really? Yeah. You know, I bet Sweden has a ton of tech companies. Do you think so? I would bet they do. I bet they have a crap load up there. Well... They're an intelligent people up they there. They are. You know? They are. Um, Duncan Styles, The Dunk. The Dunk. Uh, Alan Kebab. Oh, man. I put Alan Kebab's name on here twice. It took you must me. have been hungry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anthony Jarvis. The Jarv. <laughs> Tapes from the Crypt. 
Tate. We haven't heard from Tate for a while. Well, it's because he uh, gave up the social media for Lent this year. Oh, for the whole year? No, for Lent. Lent's 40 days. You said, oh, okay. So for Lent this year, he gave up. Oh, um, I think he mentioned that, didn't yeah. he? Oh, yeah, man. he'll be back soon. Good luck, Tate. He'll be back. Josh Nan. I like Nan bread. Are you familiar with that? No, I've never heard of that. It's an Indian bread. It's cooked in a tandoori oven. It's very, very good. What's a tandoori oven? It's a like a circular oven. It sounds like a G.I. Joe bad guy. <laughs> tandoori oven. Run, it's tandoori. <laughs> I'll get you a Joel. You got to make the dough and you throw it on the side and it spreads out. You physically toss it yeah. in there? Hmm. Yeah, it's great. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I, I think I might have put it. No, this is, I almost did it again. Alan Kabob. Yeah, Adam Bradley. <laughs> Adam Bradley. Listen, Bra- you, I, I, get on him. Get on him. <laughs> Jonas Rulo. We love Jonas. We do. Purveyor of fine, fine magnets. Which Living the dream. Living Hawaii. the dream out there. Uh, THT. It's, oh, it's got to be a drug reference. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Eric Nelson. Yep. We know him. Mm, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kim Tommy Wombertstein. Mm. Another fine name. That's, that's, that's a name. You're right. Yeah. Daniel Bingston. Probably Bing. also Swedish. Why do you say that? Bingston. That's a Swedish Anytime name. Anytime you get like an ENG in there, yeah. there's no English names that have that. If you're not if you're not from what'd you say, Sweden, we yeah. he'll, he'll let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Brutal Barracuda. The brutal one. Yeah. Master of the really cool uh, Amigos Challenge videos. Yeah, absolutely. And also those top one hundred videos. He was great at those. Yeah. Also his own channel, very good. I recommend that too. Go check him out. Darren Coles. Old man Cole. Yeah. Is he old? Merry old soul. Is he old? How can you be young with a name like Darren Coles? I don't know. Also, I guess if you're young, you're not listening to this show. That's true. <laughs> Jason warns. What's he? About what? Well, he warns you that unless you want to see some awesome Amiga action, stay away from the site that he created from scratch, everythingamiga.com. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You gotta unpack that one. Oh, I got so. it. Well, that was complicated. And Pixels at Dawn, Amigos Game Selection Committee Chairman for Life, newest member of the Brain Trust, and finally the name Kjolbjorn Barman. Very good. And we'd like to thank our people here in the chat. As you all know, we record the show most Fridays at 5.30 Eastern. This week, well, we started a little later, but not too bad. Traffic. Uh, I'd like to thank Pixels at Dawn, Night and Staff, Pixel Vixen, Edvin Helen, Bark Bit, Error 42, Ricky it. DeRocher, Pac Billy, Duncan Styles, um, Necronom, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, uh, anybody that was involved in the chat, uh, Terry Howard, Retro Man Cave Knight and Staff, yeah, thank you guys, Paul Harrington, um, thank you all so much for uh, being part of the show live, I know it's a lot of fun to uh, hang out in the chat, uh, yeah, please join us, we'd appreciate it. That's quite a list, Boat. Boy, it is. There, there, there's an extra hour to the show. <laughs> How many people are like, screw this? I was going to say we were running we were running short, so I'm glad that uh, we my, my voice went out. This is all part of your fun. Hey, I, I've got <coughs> two special announcements or a shout-out. Okay. Um, we are now, uh see, this is January, for three months into the Amigo Aaron weight loss wager. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's just say I'm starting to save my money but in case I have to pay off on some of this wager. But I will say that despite uh, three months of not fun at the at the at the hoser house, I'm still eh, I'm not too far down. I'm working on it. So if you're still interested in uh, in taking our wager, we got a link on the uh, on the on our main page, everythingamiga.com. Hop on over, hop on board. All the money goes straight to a fine charity. Both tell them what the charity is. Children's Miracle, Miracle Network. Network. Correct them. Window. Secondly. Uh, if case you noticed this week, look at this. All right, all your bickering, all your bad mouthery, <laughs> all your insultorium has gotten me to get a new pair of glasses. So now I see I can read like a champ. You can see from back here. So no more of this, no more of that. It's we over. all appreciate it. And that. I, I will say that uh, I would, I was annoyed, irritated, um, uh, unamused with the continual uh, pain and anguish that I received from people telling me that I was going blind, and now. I can see, and it's great. So I owe you guys a, a debt of gratitude for pushing me to go get the glass. The chat has exploded with uh, with uh, your brother saying Terry's very proud. Terry, it's Terry's what she was the literally she was the uh, uh, the leader of the pack. Mm-hmm. But I heard it over and over. Yeah, and I know when I you know, and it's I know when well, I was just, blind. Sometimes you have to have an intervention, and that, that's what is that that's what, what that was? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. TLC was here. They filmed it. Look for it in about six months. Oh man. 
Good Lord. Anyway, thank you. I got nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, next week, Aaron, we're going to shift gears completely. Uh, you know, it's starting to get warmer outside. Mm. The sun, the surf, the waves, all the fine features of living in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. The waves? Oh, yeah. The, the wave surf, pool. The sand. Yeah. Um, we're going to be playing midwinter. So, just as soon as we drag ourselves out of our winter coma, we get drugged back what you, in. What do you know about midwinter, I can only assume that it's based on the classic uh, British Christmas carol, In the Bleak Midwinter. That doesn't... Mm. In which you play as Joseph, trying to find room at the end. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out for him, did it? It did not. Oh, did man. Not. Well, what the hell? We'll give it a shot. We will. We will. So, guys, until then, keep playing the Amiga. We'll see you next time. And press play. <laughs> I just screwed up. <laughs> Come on. One, two, three. Adios. Adios. <laughs>